Welcome to Review Central. This is USTET reviewer number 3, featuring questions for the USTET Science Proficiency Subtest. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the USD Entrance Test, or USTET. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous USTETs. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Let's begin. Question number one. Earth science. The following statements regarding the layers of Earth are all true, except A. Crust is the densest layer of the Earth. B. Mantle is the thicker layer compared to the outer core. C. The cores of Earth are the thickest layers of the planet. D. The thickness of Earth in terms of its radius is around 6,400 kilometers. E. None of the above. The correct answer is A. That the crust is the densest layer of the Earth is not true. In fact, crust is the least, not most, dense layer among the layers of the Earth. The inner core is the densest due to its metallic composition. Question number 2. Biology. What is the difference between active and passive transport? A. Active transport utilizes cellular energy. Passive transport does not require cellular energy. B. Active transport includes endocytosis, exocytosis, and osmosis. Passive transport includes simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. C. Active transport moves water-soluble molecules across the cell membrane, passive transport moves ions, large proteins, and complex sugars across the cell membrane. D. Active transport pumps molecules in and out of the cell membrane through a concentration gradient, passive transport aids the passage of molecules against the concentration gradient. E. None of the above. The correct answer is A. Remember that active transport is the process of moving molecules across a cellular membrane through the use of cellular energy. Passive transport, on the other hand, can only move molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. In active transport, the molecules move against the concentration gradient whereas in passive transport, the molecules move along the concentration gradient. Hence, the correct answer is letter A. Question number 3. Chemistry. What is the polarity and molecular geometry of phosgene? A. Polar, trigonal planar. B. Nonpolar, trigonal planar. C. Polar, bent. D. Nonpolar, linear. E. Polar, octahedral. The correct answer is A. Polar, trigonal planar. The Lewis structure of phosgene consists of three different elemental atoms. The carbon atom is present at the center of the molecule. It is bonded to an oxygen atom at the center and two atoms of chlorine, one on each side. There are a total of three electron density regions around the central carbon atom in the Lewis structure of phosgene. All three electron density regions are constituted of bond pairs which mean there is no lone pair on the central carbon atom in phosgene. Question number 4. Earth Science. How are igneous rocks formed? A. One component they need to solidify and cool down is a fossil. B. Sedimentation of magma because of the addition of salt water. C. Solidification of lava as it goes out of the volcano. D. Crystallization of sediments after being dehydrated and liquefied. E. They form and gain their shape due to high heat and high pressure. The correct answer is C. One of the ways igneous rocks are formed is through the solidification of lava as it goes out of the volcano. Igneous rocks are formed when magma or lava is exposed to cooler temperature and solidifies. It can be classified into two, intrusive igneous rocks and extrusive igneous rocks. Question number 5. Chemistry. Oxides of certain metals and nonmetals can exhibit acidic or basic properties. Which of the following oxides is expected to act as an acid when dissolved in H2O? A. Sulfur dioxide, SO2 B. Magnesium oxide, MgO C. Calcium oxide, 
CaO, D. Sodium dioxide, Na2O, E. Lithium dioxide, Li2O. The correct answer is A. SO2 or sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is also known as sulfurous anhydride, sulfurous acid anhydride, or sulfur oxide and has the chemical formula SO2. Sulfur dioxide was discovered by the Romans during the process of winemaking. It is an easily liquefiable colorless gas and has a pungent smell of rotten eggs. Sulfur dioxide reacts with water to form sulfurous acid, H2SO3, as the product. The chemical reaction is as follows. SO2, a gas, plus H2O, a liquid, results to H2SO3, a liquid and an acid. Question number 6. Physics. The kinetic energy of a small truck that is moving at 36 km per hour is 1.3 times 10 raised to 5 joules. What is the truck's kinetic energy if its speed is increased to 72 km per hour? A. 1.3 times 10 raised to 5 joules. B. 2.6 times 10 raised to 5 joules. C. 3.6 times 10 raised to 5 joules. D. 5.2 times 10 raised to 5 joules. E. 52 times 10 raised to 5 joules. The correct answer is D. 5.2 times 10 raised to 5 joules. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to the square of the velocity. Changing the speed from 36 km per hour to 72 km per hour would mean that the speed is doubled. When the speed is doubled, the kinetic energy will quadruple. Therefore, the new kinetic energy is 4 times 1.3 times 10 raised to 5 joules, or 5.2 times 10 raised to 5 joules. Let's prove this mathematically using our kinetic energy formula. When the speed or velocity is 36 km per hour, the kinetic energy is 1.3 times 10 raised to 5 joules. Plugging in these values to the formula, we'll have 1.3 times 10 raised to 5 is equal to 1 half times the mass m times 10 squared. Why did we use 10 squared instead of 36 squared for the velocity? Remember that in the kinetic energy formula, the velocity should always be expressed in meters per second, not kilometers per hour. Converting 36 km per hour to meters per second will give us 10 meters per second. From here we can compute for the mass of the truck to be 2,600 kg. When the velocity or speed is doubled, the kinetic energy is now equal to 1 half times 2,600 times 20 squared. Therefore, our new kinetic energy is now 5.2 times 10 raised to 5. Question number 7. Biology. Choose from the following the one with correct taxonomic organization from specific to the general classification. A, D, K, P, C, O, F, G, S. B, K, D, P, C, F, O, G, S. C, D, K, C, P, O, F, G, S. D, S, G, F, O, C, P, K, D, E, S, G, F, C, O, P, D, K. The correct answer is D. Taxonomic hierarchy is the process of arranging various organisms into successive levels of the biological classification, either in a decreasing or an increasing order from kingdom, or sometimes until domain, to species, and vice versa. Each of these levels of the hierarchy is called the taxonomic category or rank. The organized taxonomic hierarchy from general to specific is from domain to kingdom, to phylum, to class, to order, to family, to genus, and finally, species. Therefore, from specific to general the correct answer is letter D. Question number 8. Earth science. What is, or are, needed to form metamorphic rock from sedimentary rock? A. High pressure. B. High temperature. C. Sediments. D. A and B. E. A. B. And C. The correct answer is D. High pressure and high temperature are needed in order to transform sedimentary rocks to metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are formed when pre-existing rocks, such as sedimentary and igneous, are buried in deeper depths. 
this results in their exposure to extreme heat and pressure, then undergo the process of metamorphism. To answer the question, sedimentary rocks need high pressure and high temperature in order to transform to metamorphic rocks. Therefore, the correct answer is letter D. Question number 9. Physics. Joseph pushed a 30 kg package along a frictionless floor with a constant force of 120 newtons through a distance of 8 meters. What was the final speed of the package if it was initially at rest? A. 6.0 meter per second. B. 7.0 meter per second. C. 7.5 meter per second. D. 8.0 meter per second. E. 9.0 meter per second. The correct answer is D, 8.0 meters per second. This is a question about forces and Newton's laws of motion. Recall the formula for solving for acceleration from your physics class. Acceleration in meters per second square is equal to force in Newtons over mass in kilograms. Plugging in the given values for force F and mass M, we should arrive at 4 meters per square second as the acceleration. Now recall your formula to calculate for the final velocity of an object if its initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement are known. Final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared, plus 2 times the acceleration times the distance or displacement. Where? Final velocity is measured in meters per second. Initial velocity is measured in meters per second. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. And displacement is measured in meters. Calculating final velocity, we should arrive at 8 meters per second. Question number 10. Biology. Which of the following are formed in unisexual cones? A. Fruits. B. Seeds. C. Roots. D. Leaves. E. Flowers. The correct answer is B, seeds. Gymnosperm seeds are usually formed in unisexual cones, known as strobili, and the plants lack fruits and flowers. A gymnosperm, literally, naked seed, is any vascular plant that reproduces by means of an exposed seed, or ovule, unlike angiosperms, or flowering plants, whose seeds are enclosed by mature ovaries or fruits. The seeds of many gymnosperms are born in cones and are not visible until maturity. You have just completed Oostet Reviewer number 3, which featured questions for the Oostet Science Proficiency Subtest. If you wish to watch more Oostet Reviewers for the Oostet Science Proficiency Subtest, check out our Oostet Science Proficiency Reviewers playlist. Check out also our other Oostet playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share it to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming Oostet, and we look forward to your exciting days as a Tamasian. Go Oostet!